le président Dushi Mohamed Bazou, accompagné de sa famille, ses deux cuisiniers et deux éléments de sécurité, a tenté de s'évader de son lieu de détention. Cette tentative qui a échoué découlerait d'un plan conçu. À partir de cette plan, un déplacement serait prévu vers deux hélicoptères appartenant à une puissance étrangère censée les infiltrer à Birni Kebi, au Nigeria. Interesting. This is the kind of military operation the U.S. Navy SEALs undertake. If what the military spokesman is saying is true, that the former president, Mohamed Bazoum, wanted to escape with his family, two cooks and others, to a location in northern Niamey, where they will be flown in two helicopters to the Nigerian city of Greening Kebi. If this is true, which foreign power planned this operation and what do they stand to gain? If it is not true, why did the Nigerian military create a story that didn't happen, that didn't exist? What do they plan to gain? After all, Bazoum is being detained by the military. He is being guarded by the National Guards. So, does it mean that they intentionally left him to escape? Or, are some of them supporting him, did they help him to escape? So, it's not clear the game the military is playing here. Someone they said they will never return to power. And they also refused to release him from detention. Why bring him to national limelight again by claiming something happened that he tried to escape? Why make his supporters, that's if he still has any, remember him? Because obviously many people have taken it that he will never return to power. And considering that they've successfully expelled France from their country, the military can be possibly looking for sympathy from Nigerians. They are already popular. So it doesn't look right that someone who is already popular will do something that will diminish his popularity. Something that will make supporters of Bazoum to remember that he is still in detention. To make them to start protesting to force the military to release Bazoum. So there's a high chance that this story is true. Now, which foreign power will benefit the most? Which foreign power planned this operation? Let's start with the United States. They've officially recognized what happened in Niger as a military coup. And according to their laws and foreign policy, they will never give financial aid to a military regime. But there's a condition they gave them if they are able to announce their transition program, the time limit, let's say it's three years or two years and they stick to it, they can return some aid. Because the Nigerian authorities need every money they can get their hands on right now. They can't even pay salaries. So it's an incentive and bargaining chip for the US. They are telling them to make public their program, how they plan to return to civil rule, and they can get by their laws and support them financially. They can say it's a support for return to democracy. So they can support them while still maintaining that they are a military regime. But the support is to help them to return to democracy. The U.S. should not be seen as being hostile to the regime. Otherwise, what happened to France might happen to them. They might just wake up one day and tell them to leave their country, to close down their military base that they spent millions of dollars building. So it doesn't make any sense that the United States will jeopardize a fragile relationship they have with the Nigerian military by helping Bazoum to escape. What do they stand to gain? What are they going to gain from Bazoum that they will put into jeopardy? Millions of dollars and, you know, all the relationship. So, this rules out the United States being involved if it is true. Another foreign power that is most likely to gain something by helping Bazoum to escape is France. Gain in this manner might even mean destabilization of Niger Republic. Remember this guy who openly said this on national television, that now that they have been expelled from Niger, that they can now plan secret operations to destabilize Niger. So they are not happy that they've been expelled from Niger. They can do anything to get back that influence, that hold they have in Niger Republic. They can do anything to get it back. So even if it means helping Bazoum to escape to France, where he will now be in exile and continue fighting and all the time he's on television, granting interviews, trying to whip up sentiments in a way that would destabilize the country politically, economically, 
it might go on to a level that they might even try an invasion. This was the same thing they did in Ivory Coast. When Laurent Babo was in power, about 10 years he spent in power, eventually accepted to conduct a presidential election. France backed Alassane Ouattara in the election, and when it became inconclusive, they invaded the country. They already had some forces present in the country. They just needed some rebels to do the footwork. Eventually, Laurent Babo was removed from power and they installed Alassane Ouattara. So they might just be trying to replicate the same thing they did in Côte d'Ivoire. Extract Bazoum to Nigeria and eventually to France where he will start campaigning for a return to democracy or maybe try force to be reinstated. If that doesn't work, whenever the election is fixed, he will try to contest and if there's a problem, they will replicate the same thing that happened in Côte d'Ivoire. And if France is trying to do this, using Nigeria as the next drop-off point, that means the only person that can authorize that is Tinubu. Yes, and this one has everything in the world to gain by doing this. He's been looking for legitimacy all along. Remember that immediately this operation was foiled by the Nigerian authorities, he filed a motion in a Washington DC court to stop the FBI from releasing his files. So who knows, he might have planned the operation. If it was successful, he would have told President Biden, hey, you can see I'm doing my job trying to restore democracy in another country. Prevail on your guys not to release my files. Yes, this scenario is very plausible. It's not about rigging an election and buying the judges. You can never buy legitimacy. The Western world is not hungry like many people in Nigeria that can sell their conscience because of peanuts. There's a level that you get to, you will see that money can't buy you anything. You can't buy judgment in the United States. You can't buy everybody. Not in Nigeria, where you buy to the extent that he captured Lagos State. The capturing of Nigeria is in process right now. They are capturing anyone capturable. Nigeria may soon become a one-party state. It will happen before our very own eyes. The kind of politics we practice here is not based on ideology. Many of them are just there for what they can get, not what they can give into the system. They see politics as a form of employment, that they get employed, stay in position, and be putting people in positions. They start from their family members, their friends and associates. It never gets outside of the circle. It's because these men are short-sighted. If they weren't, there's everything to be gained when many people are rich in a country. Why not create a country that works for everyone? Anyway, no matter your political leanings, you must agree that what happened yesterday at the Supreme Court was like a dark cloud hovering over Nigeria. No celebration whatsoever. The same way people didn't celebrate when he was declared, and the same way they didn't celebrate after their pay court verdict, and yesterday again. No one celebrated. Everybody knows that he did not win, so he can buy everything in the world, but he can't buy legitimacy. Thanks for watching.